Alhamdulillah, الذي كتب الآثار ونسخ الآجال القلوب عنده مفضية والسر عنده علانية الحلال ما أحل والحرام ما حرم الدين ما شرع والأمر ما قضى الخلق خلقه والأمر أمره وهو الله الرؤوف الرحيم ونصلي ونسلم على النبي الأمين سيد المرسلين خاتم النبيين محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وأصحابه أجمعين يا رب العالمين أما بعد فيقول الله تبارك وتعالى سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما وردنا عن فضائل الشام أنه قال أن الملائكة باسط أجنحتهم تحت أرض الشام وأن, بيت وأن مسجد بيت المقدس ثاني بيوت الله في أرض الله وأن أهل الشام صفوة الله من خلقه وعباده أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Dear brothers and sisters, we start by praising Allah tabarak wa ta'ala We praise him We praise him with words that he praised himself And we do not praise him except that which, we, which he has praised himself with Words of praise which are not boundarized nor by time nor by place. And we ask him for his grace and mercy on the day of Jum'ah. We ask him to bless the Muslim Ummah, to honor the Muslim Ummah, and to restore Muslim dignity. And we send salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, his companions, and his Ummah at large. Dear brothers and sisters, Number one on the day of Jum'ah and on every day we ask Allah Ta'ala that He honor the Muslims and that He restore Muslim honor and that He restore human dignity. Because if there's one thing which angered the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and angered him in a way which none other matter could anger him, it was when human dignity was violated. Whether it was the dignity of a Muslim or whether it was the dignity of a non-Muslim. Human dignity is sacred. Allah Ta'ala said in the Qur'an, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ That we have made, the, we have honored the children of Adam. We have sanctified them. They are sacred. No one would go and destroy the Kaaba. No one would even think about it. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that the, the blood and the honor of a Muslim is far sacred. It's far more sacred than the honor of the Haram Sharif. The dignity of the human being is very high in our deen. This is why when the dignity of the human being is violated, that Muslims are obliged to speak out about it. And that Muslims are obliged by their deen to speak out for those who were oppressed. When the Messenger of Allah وسلم, saw people oppressed, he spoke out. Generally, sometimes we think that the messenger was so kind, so frail, so soft. But when it came to being brave, he was a lion. When it came to standing up for the rights of the oppressed, he was a lion. He spoke out. When the people's rights were violated in Makkah Mukarramah, the messenger of Allah وسلم, would go straight to the Quraysh. He would go straight to Abu Jahl and he would demand their rights. He would demand for them their hukuk, their rights. In these days, we know that the, the rights of our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine, uh, the, the rights of our Muslim brothers in Palestine for ages, for, for so much time has been violated. And so first we speak about, as we have been speaking about after Aisha and Fajr, the honor of these people, the honor of the people of Sham. 
and that the honor of this land and the honor of these people is not an ethnic issue. Speaking out for these people is not a national or ethnic issue, it's a Muslim issue. If you recited the kalima la ilaha illallah, then it's a problem for you. It's a problem. One of the muftis, great muftis of our time, he wrote a whole book. It's in Arabic, maybe probably translated in English as well. That the matter of Palestine, qadiyya to kulli Muslim. It's the affair of every Muslim. It's not an affair of one people. And so the, this land, my brothers and sisters, it's, very, it's a very sacred land. It's a part of our deen. It's a part of our religion. It's the second mas masjid established on the face of the earth. The Messenger of Allah Rasulullah said, when speaking about Masjid Bayt al Maqdis, that after the Haram Sharif, after Makkah Mukarramah, the Masjid of Makkah was established. 40 years after the Masjid of Bayt al Maqdis was established. And how do we understand this knowing that the distance between Ibrahim السلام, and the distance between those who constructed Masjid Bayt al Maqdis, Dawood السلام, and his children, was far greater than 40 years. These these places of land were marked and made sacred by Allah Ta'ala much before Ibrahim والسلام. This land was chosen by Allah Ta'ala and first constructed by the angels. When Adam والسلام, came down to earth, he wished to be close to Allah. So Allah Ta'ala guided him first to the Haram Sharif, first to Masjid Makkah, first to Masjid Makkah. Then after the ulama say either Adam or his children were then guided to huh? the other qibla of the Muslims. The other qibla of the Muslims, Masjid Ubayt al Maqdis. There's not a place in this land. And when we talk about this land, there's a lot of confusion. Is it the Dome of the Rock? Is it the Masjid with the Gray, with the gray Dome, Masjid al Qabili? Is it Jami'ah? Is it the other Jami'ah of Marwan? The fact of the matter is that that whole walled area is Masjid al-Aqsa. That whole walled area, that complete area is Haram, it's sacred land, it's all considered Masjid al-Aqsa. So whether it's Masjid al-Qabili or any other land, it's all sacred. Just as the way that to violate anything in the Haram Sharif in Makkah Mukarramah is impermissible, to, to violate any person or anything in this land is impermissible. And it angers Allah Ta'ala. It angers Allah Ta'ala. There's not a piece of this land except what messengers were sent to this land. The Prophet ﷺ said that the angels spread their, spread their wings underneath the land of Sham. Again, Sham referring to, of course, the greater area right, around Urdun and Syria and, and Palestine. But in specific, the land of Masjid Bayt al-Maqdis, the sacred land where all the prophets were sent. And where even the prophethood and the leadership of our prophet was completed the day he was taken to this land to lead the prophets. So that what? He could embody what the prophets of Masjid Bayt al Maqdis had within themselves. So that he could embody that. So that we remember as Muslims that our tie, just as strong as it is with the Haram Sharif, is just as strong as it is with that land. There was a time where the Muslims would prostrate toward this land. It was narrated by Imam Bukhari in Muslim that for 16 to 17 months, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina Munawwara, the Muslims were praying towards where? They were praying towards Jerusalem. They were praying towards Masjid Bayt al Maqdis. It was the Qibla of the Muslims. When the Sahaba passed away after the demise of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ after time, Anas was one of the companions who lived for a very long time. He would boast about one thing. What would he say? لا يبقى من مصل إلى القبلتين غيري. He would boast about the fact that there is no one who remains who prostrated to both of the qiblas. Who prostrated to both of the qiblas except me. We don't even do it just because it's a landmark. It's not because this is a landmark of us but because Allah Ta'ala made it a part of us. Because people who honor Allah honor His creation. And people who honor His creation will sanctify what Allah sanctifies. This was the same reason why Umar radiallahu anhu, when he, when he entered the land, when he entered the land of Bayt al-Maqdis, the first thing he asked was, where is Masjid al-Aqsa? 
And we know the story when he was entering the land, how he was walking and his servant was upon the donkey, upon the animal. And his servant says to him, now we're coming near, isn't it about time that you come on the animal so that you can show yourself to be a Khalifa? You can show yourself to be the leader of the Muslims? So he says to him that we made a deal that you would be on, the, on this animal for half the, the journey. So keep the deal. The time comes where Umar radiallahu anhu is about to enter that land. And Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu anhu from a distance sees him. And he says that, oh Umar, he, he, he runs to him and he tells him, oh Umar, why don't you sit on the animal? How are you going to display the Muslims? How are you going to portray the Muslims? So he tells them one thing. He tells them something and wallahi, it's, it's, it's timeless words. It's a timeless piece of advice. Which is that, that O oh Abu Ubaidah, Allah Ta'ala honored us through Islam. If we are going to seek honor through and by any other means, then Allah will embarrass us. Then Allah Ta'ala will belittle us. Muslims are given honor because of their deen. The people of Palestine, the bravery that they show, this, it's a miracle. It's none other than the angels helping them. That in front of, in front of a white collar, and just because it's a state allowed terrorism, they stand up. Normal people, normal people standing in the face of soldiers, this is a miracle. And this is because they have Iman and Deen. This is none other than that reason. Allah Ta'ala equipped them with Iman. Because they have Iman, they're able to stand. Imagine if in Ramadan, our masajid were closed because of Corona. These people were still in the masjid when bombs were dropping. This is because of Iman. This is because of Iman Allah gave them. This is that strength. When Umar radiallahu anhu entered and, and the, 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 the ambassador of, of the Heraclius, he gave the keys to Umar radiallahu anhu. The first thing that Umar radiallahu anhu after establishing the treaty between them and the people of Jerusalem said that where is the place of Masjid al-Aqsa? They said that you're asking for that place where we dump our trash? It was in the, 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 the land was in the control of who at the time? The Roman Emperor, the Christians who desired what? to embarrass the Jews. Even the Jews were th thrived and were given honor when they lived in Muslim territory, in Muslim land. If you look in Muslim history, they always desired to live in Muslim lands. Why? Because the Muslims allowed for people to thrive. And that is the freedom which Muslims want. This is what we call towards. That the people of the Wailing Wall have their Wailing Wall. The people of the church have their church. And the people of the Masajid be given their right to worship in the Masajid. When Umar radiallahu anhu came into this area, there was a church. The, the leaders of those church asked him to come and to pray in that church so that they, he could honor the land. He said, I won't pray in your church. Why? Because if I pray in your church today, tomorrow Muslim, Muslims will come and destroy it and claim it to be theirs. This is how just Umar radiallahu anhu was. And it's for this reason that since his Khilafah and afterwards, people will be, were able to prosper within this land together. It was for this reason. He prayed 50 yards away. That land where he prayed is known as Masjid Umar. Till today that masjid is still there. Till today that church is still there. Why? Because the blessings of these people who established justice, who established true justice, and my brothers and sisters, so, so this land, it concerns every person of us. It doesn't just concern any person of a certain ethnicity, it concerns every person. The Muslims first and all of humanity after. All of humanity after. Because human dignity matters. Human dignity matters. And something important, my brothers and sisters, to keep in mind while all this is happening, to keep your Iman strong as well. If the people of that land are being are strong, if their Iman is keeping them steadfast, then what right do we have to shy away? What right do we have to be silent? What right do we have to not do anything? This is not 
the worry of anyone but the Muslims. You can write to your senators and you should do so. You can voice yourself in front of the other people, but don't expect them to do anything. Maybe they'll do something if it falls in their favor, maybe they won't. Nor does this mean that you take it in your own hands and you start violence. Islam doesn't call towards anarchy. Islam calls towards what? That every person do his obligation. The obligation of Muslim leaders in Muslim countries is otherwise and the, ob the obligation of the normal and layman Muslim is something else. What you can do is what you will be questioned about and not, not other. وَلَا تَزِرُوا وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى No one will bear the sin of any other person. Why are we going to make dua for these people? Why would we try to give charity to these people even though now I hear it's very difficult even just to send charity to them. But why are we going to do these struggles? It's not even only to fulfill an obligation. It's not to fulfill an obligation. Allah Ta'ala's right and the right of His creation is so great that we could never fulfill it. But it's to make a plea bargain on the day of, on the day of resurrection. That oh Allah, I tried, I did do something. So that when the, when the conditions of Muslims around the world will be mentioned on the day of resurrection, our slates aren't empty. That nor did I make dua, nor did I care. I didn't care. And there are people sadly like this. Very sadly there are people like this. Who don't want to think about it. Muslims are steadfast on their iman. It's a very difficult situation to see these images. It's a very difficult situation to see such matters. But at the same time, Muslims have to be steadfast. Muslims have to be steadfast in understanding that Qadr comes from Allah Ta'ala. That Allah Ta'ala decrees. And within His decree, we have to be positive. It's a very difficult situation to understand. And we may not understand it. We may never understand it. That why is it that the lives of innocent people are taken? Why is evil like this taking place? But when you rely on Allah Ta'ala, then it will give you the positivity you need to be proactive and to do something good. When the angels saw Adam والسلام, being created, they raised this question and they didn't need the quote of any psychologist or any person who was taking a survey of, 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 of evil and goodness amongst humanity. They said this before that, Oh Allah, are you going to create a people who are going to cause destruction? Allah Ta'ala said that I know that which you do not know. And so my brothers and sisters, some of this may not make sense. It may be very difficult to understand why what is happening and the way it's happening. But to stay reliant on, on, upon Allah Ta'ala. The way that the people of that land are being reliant upon Allah Ta'ala. The way that they are relying on Allah Ta'ala. To remember that there is a hereafter and we believe in the hereafter. And that there's no dictator, nor any person, normal person, except that they will be taken to account. People will be taken to account. Allah Ta'ala in the book doesn't speak so much about fate and decree, which human beings battle and wrestle with all the time. The question of why, as much as He spoke about the hereafter. To remember the hereafter. Why? Because when you remember the hereafter, then everything makes sense then everything makes sense. That the Messenger of Allah Wasallam said that sometimes Allah Ta'ala allows for oppressive people. Allows for oppressive people in this world. Why? Why? Because the person who is oppressive, the person he is, who is oppressive, he will not be freed from his oppression. But the people who were oppressed, one day they will f forget their oppression. The Messenger of Allah Wasallam said, that the majority of people who will enter Jannah will be the poor and the weak. And those people, when they will be dipped into Jannah for one second, they will forget every single tragedy they faced in this world. And that the people who will see the blessing that they were given, they will wish on the day of resurrection that their skins be cut by scissors. That they had, had they been tested by the test that the other people were tested with, so that they could gain the high rank that they were given. My brothers and sisters, when the companions of Rasulullah saw the bala and the tragedy, saw the test which Rasulullah was going through, it didn't make sense to them. And they loved him more than anyone loved him. When Umar entered the household of the Prophet, 
and he saw the, the he saw the lines which were on the back of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That he didn't even have a bed, and he saw the marks on his skin. And Umar radhiallahu anhu said to him, "The O Rasulullah, I've seen the palaces of Caesar. You deserve much more. You deserve much more." And he cried. And what did the Prophet say to him? O Umar, "Ama tarda an lahum al dunya wa lan al akhira." That O oh Umar, does it not please you that these dis the, the, the people of oppression and the disbelievers, maybe they'll gain the dunya which is limited, but we have the hereafter. The hereafter is written for the Muslims. It's important to, no matter how difficult the situation is, my brothers and sisters, to keep us ourselves reminded of this. Reminded of this, that what happens, it happens for a reason. And that Allah Ta'ala is above everyone and He is watching. And that whatever happens, it happens in the favor, even if apparently it doesn't seem like that. That it happens in favor of the believers. It happens in favor of the believers. This is what is going to push you and I to be positive of what happens. And to be proactive and to seek our right. Muslims in America are scared of what? Of, be, of being dishonored because of standing of their rights. My brothers and sisters, people are standing up for rights in this country which don't make any sense. Which don't make any sense. Muslims have to stand up for their rights. Muslims have to write. Muslims have to voice themselves in the sunnah manner which the Messenger of Allah gave to them. When the Messenger of Allah was in Makkah Mukarramah and two orphans came and cried to him that our right is being violated. Our right is being violated. That our parents left wealth for us and whose, whose hand has that wealth been left in? They said the hands of Abu Jahl. What did the Messenger of Allah do? He didn't say just be patient. Again, our patience and our belief in that is there. It's like the matter of tawakkul. Just because you have tawakkul on Allah doesn't mean you sit in your house and wait for the dinner to come in front of you. There's a way of reconciling between tawakkul and practicality and reality. The same way in this situation. The Messenger of Allah went right away to Abu Jahl and he said, I demand the rights of these two young orphans. This is something for the Muslims to think about. This is something for the Muslims to think about and what they are doing for every situation which Muslims are facing within the world. I'll quickly conclude with just a few verses of a poem. There's a a very long poem. If you speak the Arabic language, I would highly recommend that you read it. It's known as the Nuniya of Abu al-Baqa al-Randi. He was a poet who, when Undulus, when Muslim Spain fell, when the last of the lands of the Muslims was occupied by the, dis, by the, by the others, by the opponents, that he, he, he wrote a qasida. He wrote a long you know, poem. And in there he says, in there he says that there is nothing, I'll quickly just translate, there is nothing that is completed except that it, its incompletion remains. Right? There's nothing that's complete, there's nothing that's perfect. So no human being should be deceived by this life. These are those matters as I have seen, they rotate, dual, huh? they rotate, they flip from condition to condition. There's, there are people who are made joyful and pleased by one era in one time and then there are people who are saddened by another time. This is an abode which doesn't allow for anything to remain, nor does it allow for any condition to remain. Where are those kings and where are their crowns? Where are their crowns? Where, are, where is their jewelry? Where are the, the kingdoms which Shaddad had raised? Where is the... Where, where, are, where is the leadership which the people of Sasan, the, the people of Sasan had shown in the land of the Persians? Where is the collection of Qarun? Where are the people of Ad and Shaddad and Qahtan? Upon all of these people came a matter which could never be sent back. A matter which could not be debated, could not be denied. And they passed in a manner by which no one even remembers who these people are. No one even remembers who these people are. The Muslims they cry, the Muslims they cry out of grief, like the way the companion grieves out of loss of his or her beloved. Upon the loss 
of lands of the Muslims which are now empty and deserted and now kufr has started to make their way in building its way within that land a land and remember you know we remember our history remember the fall of Undulus he says that remember when the masajid became churches and that all of what was inside became statues and crosses and that even the maharib even the pulpits are crying and they are of no life they are just objects and even the the mihrab of the masajid which is just made out of wood even they are singing poems of grief of the loss of the muslims that oh person who is heedless and you have within time a lesson to take from just remember that if you are asleep that time is widely awake time is widely awake and you person who is walking in luxury don't forget what happened to Andalus don't forget what happened to the Muslims of Spain don't forget that what happened to them could happen to you and then he says towards the end and I, I cut out portions actually from it because it's very long he says that oh are there any souls are there any souls which have denied to be disgraced and which have been high and that have held on to high determination are there any people who will help help towards the cause of good is there not any person who after a people were honored and now they are disgraced to return to them their honor people who yesterday were kings within their houses and now today they are slaves within the, within the hands of the disbelievers our brothers and Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine many of them lost their houses it's a very similar situation they don't have houses anymore and if you see these people you'll see them shocked in a condition that they have no one to guide them and they have they have worn the cloak of defeat in many different colors and when you see their cry when they're being sold in the in the in the market of the disbelievers and you'll see the 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 the, the the worries and the concerns which have come on to them that is there no one for the mother and the child who they have been separated just like the way the body and the soul are separated and what about for that child that young girl who's beautiful just like the sun when the sun rises and now what now what the others and the people are forcefully taking them for matters which can't even be discussed and the heart is crying and the heart is crying and the eyes are tearing it's for matters like this that the heart cries out of grief and that's if when in the heart there is iman and islam when hearts have iman and islam then such situations are very difficult for the for the hearts to handle we ask my brothers and sisters that Allah Ta'ala in the matter of justice raise the honor of the Muslims and that he restore to them their honor and that he restore to them their land and that he restore to them everything that belongs to them aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu lafurur rahim Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu, and Astainu, when a Stafiru, when a Minubi, when a Tawakalu Ali, when a Rubilah in Shuri Amfusina, when a Sayati Amalina, Maya Dilahu Fala Mudilla, when a Yudil Fala Hadiella, when a Shadu Allah Ilaha Illa Allah, who had the Hula Sharikala, when a Shadu Anna Sayyidana, when Maulana Muhammad and Abdu who were a Sulu. I bad Allah in the Shaira Kadah. قد أحسن وأبدع حيث قال لكل شيء إذا ما تم نقصان فلا يغر بطيب العيش إنسان هي الأمور كما شاهدتها دول لمن سره زمن ساءته أزمان وهذه الدار لا تبقي على أحد ولا يدوم على حال لها شان أين الملوك ذو التجان من يمن وأين منهم أكاليل وتجان وأين ما شاده شداد في إرم وأين ما ساسه في الفرس ساسان وأين ما حازه قارون من ذهب وأين عاد وشداد وقطان أتى على الكل أمر لا مرد له حتى قضوا فكأن القوم ما كانوا ألا نفوس أبيات لها همم على الخير أنصار وأعوان يا من لذلة قوم بعد عزتهم 
حال حالهم كفر وطغيان بالأمس كانوا ملوكا في منازلهم واليوم هم في بلاد الكفر عبدان فلو تراهم حيارا لا دليل لهم عليهم من ثياب الذل ألوان ولو رأيت بكاهم عند بيعهم لهالك الأمر واستهوتك أحزان يا رب أم وطفل حيل بينهما كما تفرق أرواح وأبدان وطفلة مثل حسن الشمس إذ طلعت مثل حسن الشمس إذ طلعت كأنما هي ياقوت ومرجان يقودها العلج للمكروه مكرهة العين باكية والقلب حيران لمثل هذا يذوب القلب من كمد إن كان في القلب إسلام وإيمان عباد الله إن الله قد أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى به الملائكة المسبحة بقدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى الملائكة المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعزهم في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم في وجه الأعداء يا رب العالمين اللهم ثبت أقدامهم وثبت قلوبهم يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقم الصلاة